resta rapide, allant partir. Votre fils a quand même... When I first came to St. Mary's, he had already been doing the play for a few years. So we had an idea of how things had gone, but also where he saw things going. There were sort of uh, different teachers on staff that helped. They would be the head of costumes or the head of production or the head of um, props or what have you. And the students worked with the teacher to make sure that all of the things were gathered that we needed. So one thing that we had changed when I came to St. Mary's was um, to really make it a student-driven production. We now use a student head of props and costumes or a student head of tickets and posters or what have you. So there are fewer teachers involved and more students taking on the roles. I mean, every year we read a few different scripts and we actually, and funnily enough, Mary Poppins was one that we had read for this year and we didn't choose it, thankfully, because WCI is doing it. We, uh, we just try to find scripts that we think, that we find entertaining, that we think are enjoyable, but also that we think students can relate to or find enjoyable and that our audience will enjoy. And Guys and Dolls is kind of a classic. I was actually, actually a little upset considering we've already done the musical before and the policy is that we do, uh, like every musical that we do, we only do it once. We had done Guys and Dolls before, but it was before my time, so I had never seen it done here at the school. It was definitely more of an adult-themed uh, play with a lot of the jokes aimed more towards the adult audience, but I think everyone generally enjoyed it, whether they're young or old or guys or girl, guys or dolls. <laughs> so obviously we read the script early on and, and then do our auditions and, and cast the show. Um, well, I auditioned just like everyone else for Sarah. But Mr. Yasher did ask me to do the promo for Guys and Dolls for Arts Fest. Bugner and Yasher approached me and they was like, oh, would you like to, uh, could you uh, promote Guys and Dolls for us? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I kind of saw it as if I did really well at Arts Fest, they'd think of me for the part. But if I sucked at Arts Fest, I knew I was screwed. It kind of showed to Bugner and Yasher that I could do this role. So that's when I really realized that I liked the character Sarah Brown. So that's why I specifically auditioned for that part of mine. So the auditions are held the year before the musical actually even starts in May. And we do a monologue and we have a, a song. We sing a couple choruses and you know, just sing a couple bars. I actually asked for a male part in audition, so. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted a mustache, and I've always been into that, like, manscaping and stuff. <laughs> um, I went in, I sang for a bit, I did a monologue, just kind of walked out and got the role. <laughs> sometimes things, dreams do come true, sometimes. I originally wanted Sarah, but then, you know, she's got some uh, high notes, and as we know, I don't have a high voice. So I think Adelaide was a lot better student. You know, I usually, especially in the St. Mary's stuff, get typecasted as the bad guy. Loud, obnoxious, kind of bitch character. It's true, I do. And, and it doesn't bother me because I know I can play those characters really well. But it was really nice to be able to have a little change up. It was nice to be a character that was girly and that was fun to play. And she had cute little songs and she got to wear cute outfits. And I really liked doing the little New York accent. I watched lots of videos of different aspects of Nathan Detroit to figure out who his character actually was. And then through reading the script and watching other people perform it, I noticed that he was this guy who thought he was on top of the world and he had everything figured out even though he didn't at all. They all just, I think, were true to their characters. And if you've ever seen the movie, so, for example, my husband, uh, Guys and Dolls, the Frank Sinatra film, happened to be on TV after he'd come to see the play. 
and he had never seen it before. Frank Sinatra has amazed the entertainment world with his dramatic prowess. Now to prove he's still the top song interpreter, here he is as Nathan Detroit. You know, he kind of saw Warren's character in um, the Frank Sinatra character, and he, he could see, he could make some connections between the stage version that we did and the film, so I think that's a big compliment to the people who portrayed those characters. Um, I've been friends with a lot of the main cast for years. Great people to work with. I love them all. Like, they're all so talented people. I'm so glad that everyone got the parts that they did. I love working with these guys. Um, I feel like we kind of developed the chemistry because we worked together last year. So, like, we didn't have to, like, be awkward around each other because we already did that from here in town. But um, I feel like we kind of just, like, left off where we, st like, stopped with here in town. Then we kind of just brought it into Guys and Dolls. And so we kind of just, like, reconnected and all that. The nice thing about working with, with I guess what you would call like the main cast this year, was um, because, like you said, there a lot of them had a, a fairly large part in Urine Town, and so when you work with someone that closely for that long, um, you kind of get to know their habits. You, you get to know uh, what they're capable of, also how far you can push them, uh, how hard they're willing to work, uh, those sorts of things. So. Then this was a bonus for us this year because a lot of those same students were involved in both shows. So we kind of knew already that they would do their homework, that they would take it upon themselves to learn their lives, learn their songs, and that it mattered to them. They were really cooperative. Like if I asked them to do something, they would do it. If I asked them to change something, they would change it. Things like that. The other thing is usually in the summer, I'll take the script home, um, kind of get an idea or we'll discuss an idea for our set beforehand. Um, get an idea of where things are going to be on stage so that then I can kind of think about where I want the actors to stand, where, what I want them to do during particular scenes or songs. So all of that stuff usually happens in the summer. Automatically, if you don't have like a main, main part, you're in the chorus. The chorus is one of the biggest parts of the show. They're some of the most valuable assets to the musical. They listened really well. They weren't as crazy as last year. You act different in every scene because it's different emotions in every scene. Like one scene we were shooting crap, right? So we were like serious about it. We wanted to get in the game, so that's an attitude. And then the next scene we were just like in the club, so we're all just laid back. And so it's different emotions, I guess. And then I also got to play as one of the guys. So that was cool because I had to like get my hair great, tucked in, had some facial hair. It was weird. I guess, I don't know, I didn't really like it because I'm a girl, so I don't really want to be a guy the whole play almost, but. I'm a girl, original, obviously, so it was hard to like, maybe sound more like a guy or like, um, dressing up before I wouldn't have, I, would, I wasn't allowed to wear any makeup because I had to put like mascara and like eyeshadow to like make me have like a chin strap, a mustache and thicker eyebrows. We kind of have our chorus that keeps coming back every year and we had a lot of great nines this year, which is great. Well, Guys and Dolls, I've never done a play theater ever in my life. And my brother's been doing the play and I thought it'd be so much fun to do a play for the first time and experience being on stage acting instead of on stage dancing. So I've always danced on stage, but I've never acted on stage before. I'm Michaela Din. I was a part of the chorus and I was a mission band member. Um, cool. I've been doing theater ever since I was little and I heard that we were doing a musical. So on Clubs and Athletics Day, I just signed up.
there are three course codes in the production class. The whole purpose of it is to learn of, about theater, about live theater. Um, now, in those course codes, each of them have different expectations and different um, specific things that they, they need to learn about according to the curriculum. So we introduce the different di um, production departments that are available to work in for the play. Things like um, tickets and posters, spirit wear, costumes, props, sound, lighting, makeup, hair, what have you. And people get a chance to sign up for the departments that they feel they're interested in or that would best suit their talents. Um, and then we try to accommodate everyone so that they're in the production department that they want to be in. Um, however, the, the sort of the, what we call the leaders of the class are the grade 12 students who have taken production class before. Um, you know, they're supposed to be sort of the head of each department and make sure that their group or their team is working on meeting all of the deadlines required of them. But overall, I mean, our goal is to put on a school musical. Why did you drop out of the drama <laughs> class? Because I don't need it. Say what? I needed this credit for university, so I was like, hey, I'll take that class. I went into the class late. Um, I came in a, about three days after everyone else. So what are you doing on this production right now? Looking for boxes. Can I come? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Adventures on boxes. Yeah, let's go. This is exciting. We're following Lewis, that's what we're doing. Oh my gosh, a stranger in the background. <laughs> Yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for him. We're waiting? Yeah. For who? For Lewis. We're gonna stand here and wait. And he'll get us back. Thug life. He's so beautiful. Do you want to be more beautiful? You. I was supportive of all the all of the production teams. <laughs> like I I'd like to say that I helped at least once in all of them, except program maybe. And sponsors. <laughs> And all of them. <laughs> Excellent. We have gotten the boxes. Maybe. Maybe we will take one box. Just, just one box. You just need one. I just need a flat side of cardboard. Honestly, like, that's what I need. <laughs> oh my gosh. Strangers again. <laughs> they multiply. <laughs> Over here. Oh my god. It's Mr. O'Connor's office. I feel like we should say hi to Mr. O'Connor. Yeah? Should we? Yeah, we should. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Will you be seeing this year's production of Guys and Dolls? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely I will be there. I love to support St. Mary's Theatre. That sounded rehearsed. <laughs> Megan, it's not rehearsed. Why would it be rehearsed, because Megan? you probably say that every year. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. You I probably would, doesn't say that every year. I <laughs> don't say that every year. But you want to know what... But, Megan. but you want to know what he does every year? His, what, what do I do every year? He keeps his hair. It's so majestic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Don Vakta, and I did nothing. What are you doing for this production? I don't know. Everything, you know. Paint. Put these away, you know. I don't even know, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I think like on the fourth day of school because I switched out of a foods class. I was originally in ho ho house and hospitality or something like that. Um, I didn't like the stuff I was doing. I didn't have a big interest in it and really I just didn't do much to begin with. But to substitute the fact that I didn't do anything for that little part, I uh, tried to hop around um, with certain things as much as I could, like with set or I just sit around and look like I was doing something because, you know. Nick, what do you do on this production? Fuck all. <laughs> Hopefully Boobian doesn't dock my mark for that. <laughs> well, in our production class, we are told to sign up for a certain job in production, and I signed up for lights and sound. Welcome. Jehovah's Witness is not welcome. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? In grade 10, I tried to help out Miss Bugner because they said their current sound guys were going to be graduating the next year. So I was intern for that play, You're in Town. And then she told me about her productions class, and so naturally I got the job again. Da -da. 
I chose lights and sound because I got to be up in the booth. Which, for anyone who doesn't know, the booth is above the calf, right above the calf doors. So yeah, I was up there. It was great. I worked mostly with Mr. Yasher. He's been kind of in charge of the tech side of the play. We got brand new lights this year and new lighting software. I know Warren was fantastic in class, really sat down to try and learn how to use them. Lights mainly took up all the time I had in that production class. My one friend, Brandon Batog, he was the lights guy last year, and he came back for another year this year, so he was my mentor in doing the lights, even though he left me halfway through the semester, and I was left doing it all by myself, and nobody gave me any idea how to do anything. Dude, are you, like, completely intolerant to light? So I pretty much had to teach myself what to do. Hey, Juan. Are you high right now? Every day, every day. I was so fed up every day at the end because of those lights. They, they were killer. After probably about the 14th time switching and rearranging all the cords for the lights, we finally got them to work properly. Lighting is, is always an issue for us. It um, kind of comes together last minute. We got them all to work at the very last day. I would say it was worth it in the end because it did help the performance out, but we could have probably done better if there was better communication on telling me what to do with my lighting job. Warren, he kind of he was he was mostly downstairs working on lights to get it all set up. During then, I was actually working with Robert on mics and the sound. But the dial, the last one closest to you. Is it on, there's a button that says mute. If it's red, click it off. Slide that dial up. There, You have the actual mic box upstairs in the sound room, which is connected by Bluetooth to the mics that are on the actors. And then the actors have the cords that come down their face. They speak into that, goes through the box, and then into the soundboard where we control it. And from then on, we just had to check the mics, make sure they sounded all right, and adjust the volumes. He has to win it all, because if he doesn't, he's stuck in New York. All right, you're good. You can my Can I continue singing? Yeah, Okay. All right. One last thing I need you to do, talk pretty much as loud as you can. As loud? Yeah, just talk really loud. It was a lot of responsibility, and I had to show a lot of restraint by not going on the God mic. dick around with sound, putting our phone or our phone and Robert's iPad into and blasting it on the speakers. That was fun. What we're gonna do is listen to John Cena. Listen to John. Okay, and that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Liam was new up in the sound booth, and at first he was helping out with sound, and then after that we realized we were gonna need some light people for next year. On the first day of, of the play, I moved from sound to lights, so I know how to work lights and all. He did a great job this year, especially since it was his first time. I liked the set and costumes and props because I really like making sets and costumes and props. One compliment we got a lot for this particular show was that the costumes looked really good. Well, me and Landon co-led that department together, thankfully. Landon was like my rock. Hello, my name's Landon. This is my friend Amanda. This camera's like really close to my face. 
okay <laughs> so we looked at the script and we went over it a whole bunch of times and we listed all the props we would need for each scene and the props we thought would work well with different scenes and we listed all the costumes that we wanted to see come live on stage and then once those were done it was just a matter of getting them all here most of the costumes themselves were either donated or we already had them previously we wanted chorus to be doll colors so we had them in like whites blacks browns like tan colors and then we wanted main cast to be very like vibrant bright colors to stand out and we had um all the gamblers matching so they all wore like suspenders or like hats i liked how everyone wore hats <laughs> i liked how everyone learned how to flip their hats well me and one of my buddies we have a lot of a large hat collection so we brought in some to uh give out to different actors for uh, different scenes so we had to make sure those were organized and uh, make sure everyone had the right hat at the right time and we wanted to match Benny Rusty and nicely together because they're kind of like a little trio so we brought them together and we kind of tried to color coordinate them so Landon was red Garrett was blue and Nathaniel was green um, working with Amanda I liked it because because we're already like friends so like we know like what like connections we have like what can we tolerate like what makes us like mad like what will get us stressed enough like amanda and i for costumes we kind of just got together and then like we went to like we went everywhere to get the costumes so we went together like as a team uh well landon's grandma bless bless her little cute little soul she was our main source of costumes well i was lucky enough to ask my grandma and my grandma came and she like donated a lot of costumes her basement's like full of costumes and we got used so many costumes from her, so many great costumes. She was oh, an angel, a little angel in disguise for me. There was some times when like we could just leave to go get like costumes we needed or stuff we needed. I remember when I had to call the Salvation Army and I had to go get all those Salvation Army costumes and I had to walk down the hill to get them. Then I got them and then the lady from Salvation Army was really evil and she took us into this dark hallway um then we had to walk back and it was really hot and i brought them i skipped first period for it. <laughs> yeah and we went down to um woodstock theater yeah and we got a lot of costumes from them i also helped with some of the costumes i believe it was a bushel on a peck so like the feathery ones the ducks that was nice um that was really cool i got to like look on that help them you know they were able to gather some i think what were really fitting costumes for each character in each scene so uh, it was mostly our job to keep them organized and clean and make sure everyone had what they needed. And then we kind of asked other people to help us out, bring in props. Um, we made the list and we like pinned it up on the production wall, as you know. What do you do on this production? I'm in props and costume design. I sound so enthusiastic. Indeed you do. <laughs> Tell us about all the enthusiastic things you will be doing. Um, making a camera that's pretty great but a lot of them just came from like me and Landon kind of dug around our homes to see what we could find and of course like some of the props that we had at, at the school this is all the stuff we pulled out of it so far looking for a wine glass we found one that is a small wine glass that's... who wants to drink wine out of that well I don't know some midget so are you saying that Trudy and Lannister would want to drink out of that wine glass yes and Ms. Bugner really, really helped us out with that make a, a prop assignment because people were making props for the play. Well, some people were taking them off the list and making them. I made the Sally's Wedding Shop box. This is the first page. Most of it's done. That's good. Uh, second page is almost done as well. And third page, I'm not going to get into it, is only got two things down. <laughs> So, yeah. you guys are accomplishing a lot. Yeah, um, especially since there's only two people working on it right now. I just looked over everything and found we had most of the stuff here. We just needed to mark it down. So. That's good. I was constantly asking for more and more newspaper because we tried. We needed to make stacks of newspaper that people would sit on for different scenes, but I could never get anybody to to bring in enough that we needed. So we eventually just switched out the. Uh, new paper stacks for stools, and that worked just as well, but didn't look as uh, didn't look as good as the newspapers would have. One of the most important passages in the Bible. 
Peace unto W. What do you think about that, Nick? Um, what's my line? It's Isaiah, not Proverbs. That's my line. There were some things that were left last minute, like the baby clothes and the wicker basket for Nick, but it all came together really nice. Oh, no, you didn't practice. Because it looks like Oh, no, you didn't use this. Are all these getting painted? Where's the paintbrush? Olivia. No. Olivia, where's the splash? Make a funny face. On the top. We wanted it to be kind of um, like a grayscale idea. That was our original plan. Scale, and then our main characters to kind of pop in different colors. What are you gentlemen doing? Murdering a curtain with a needle. Okay, speed does not mean better. No, but it is. No, but at least mine was efficient enough. Would you rather be efficient or hold together for less than Amazing. Slow, but Simply good. amazing. No. Now you look to him. Now you look to me. Now you look to him. Now you look to you. Now you look to him. And now you look to me. Now your perspectives are changing. Well, one problem we were having was that uh, the cur the backdrop of it, which was this New York sky scene, if it was placed right at the top, it was it didn't look quite right because there was a lot of black at the bottom. But if we placed it too low, it there was too much black at the top and it didn't look good either. So that started to become a problem because we tried pinning it in the middle, which didn't really work, and we tried uh, like moving it up and down, but nothing seemed to work right. So what we did we uh, tied off at the top bar and then lowered the top bar using some chains, and that worked a lot better than uh, trying to pin it in the middle of the black curtain that we already had. Teach you the attitude adjustment! <laughs> Makes me happy. Alright, have a good Yeah. I say That's so negative. So what are you doing on this production right now? Um making the mission background. I also did help with the uh, Havana scene and the hot box wall that switched over. I stapled some streamers to the hot box sign also. <laughs> that is that a, a, a can full of chocolate? No, nope, it's paint. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm a really bad painter, Mike. Look at this. I thought you were going to cut some stuff. It's okay. Yeah, your hair. <laughs> I remember there's one thing. When we were painting the stairs and I used the oil paint, and then Miss Boomer was like, Satan. And she like yelled at all of us. I helped with a bit of the set, painting those towers. I helped Andrew with that. Andrew is one of my close friends. Because <laughs> you're too nice, Kim. Oh. Gotta work on being work on This huge middle finger. <laughs> Don't put that in the video. Not gonna work, but Yo, that's Here? definitely gonna be seen. Sure. Don't you have gray paint? Yeah, there's another one in front of her. But she's still, it's not done. So once they look done. Uh, Who painted that? Like the back? Black like. These? Those buildings look damn attractive. What do you think one? No. I was house, basically. I was basically co-house, basically.
I did set the last time I did production and I thought house would be the closest I could get to set without doing set because Miss Wigner said I wasn't allowed to do set <laughs> because I had to do something new. So I stretched my horizons and did the closest thing to set, which was house, and it was fun. I was just mainly a helper in team house. I was in charge of doing stage dressing, so I did the big marquee signs that were above the stage for the show, and I was, in also, I was also in charge of the showcase. There was a lot of designing that had to go into house, so for the showcase I had to sketch a design, and I had to sketch a design for the top of the stage, and then after that it was just painting. Team House was supposed to be about eight people, but as it actually started to get going and people found what they really liked to do and what they didn't like to do, a lot of people put their talent to use in different departments. So at the end of the second week, Team House was three people. So it was me, Garrett Van Lau, and uh, Megan Davinsky. And then because we don't have a construction teacher this semester, um, we weren't able to do anything that had to do with construction, which was like 99% of what we wanted to do. So we ended up having to use canvas and only being able to do the top of the stage and not down the stage or side of the stage. Oh, oh my God, my thumbs hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can you please put Shut up and do it. With oh no, my God. With no oh video, my God. just audio. Okay. <laughs> do that, please. Okay, oh. look how red my thumbs are. <laughs> Look at them. Look at how red they are. Thumb massages. Actually, that feels really nice. Thumb. Oh, okay, that came out more wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, I assisted with the marquee signs above the stage. So they had different stores on them and Broadway signs. I gather names of various locations from the play. So I'd skim through the script just looking for place names. Like, oh, we could use this, or oh, we could use that. I didn't do much in the way of actually painting the signs. I did a little bit, but I feel as though getting those signs ready, like, I painted them white, basically. That was basically my big job, getting those signs white and able to be repainted. So that was the big part. Then we had to draw out the designs and sketch the lettering, which Megan Davinsky did. Megan put the little artistic touch on it. Just little things like the Daily News had amazing font that I, I could have never ever done. And so Megan would do stuff like that. And Garrett and I would do the really easy stuff like taping and painting and stuff. Lennon, how are you doing today? Horrible. What do you think of that sign up there? Horrible. Wednesday morning. Garrett's like not a very good painter. He usually gets it more on him. It was my job to get the word out to everyone, bring in the baked good or money for baked goods during the intermission. Yeah, made that announcement where I claimed people would die by sharks if they didn't bring it in. Um, no one died by shark, unfortunately. Miss Bugner was really great at giving us ideas when we didn't really have ideas for designs, and um, she's really encouraging at for deadlines and stuff for us to get things going because at some points it did look like we were never going to get it done but she was really great at encouraging us. I think we did well. I think while we didn't get everything done what we wanted to get done and we didn't fully explore everything, what we did explore was really explored to its maximum. Yeah, we just ran into time and resources which was a really big problem. We were able to overcome most of it in the sense that we got it done, but it definitely wasn't to the level I wanted it to be at. But you win some, you lose some. Oh my god! Jesus! Are you yes, trying god. to give me a heart attack? It appears that you are making the program. How does that make you feel? It's going pretty well right now, hopefully. I can get it working. I made the entire program for the musical. I helped with the design of the tickets and the poster. I made the poster, and so the poster went on the front of the program. Landon did the cover. Mr. Wilde took the photos for the program, but otherwise, I did everything else. Jessica did most of the program. I just helped her like do like the photography and like fix the errors. Doing the program was very <laughs> tedious. It sucks. So I was going for a like real classic vintage look. Very 50s glam kind of thing. 
with pops of red here and there. So the first thing you have to do is get a cast list and a character list, which Bruce Mugder never gave me. So I did it all myself, figuring out who played who, and I did finally get a list from Megan. But then you have to get pictures of everyone. So that was a pain, making sure everyone showed up to get their picture taken. And then we kind of just like collected people's bios. And then you have to type up all the bios, put them all in, and create the pages. And then I, I like fixed the headshots, so like I, I photoshopped them. I photoshopped them. Why, hello there, Jessica. Hi, Michael. Still working on the program, I see. Yup, it's not going really well right now. The Adobe Illustrator doesn't seem to like the border that Landon and I made. So I have to make a new one in Illustrator. It's a bit of a struggle. And it's kind of annoying. Adobe Illustrator, as soon as you put a picture in it, it takes five minutes to save per picture. So there's six pictures on every page of the cast files. So I've spent more than six hours staring at a computer screen saying, saving file. <laughs> it sucked. And then you have to get messages from the stage manager, the choreographer, the principal, and the directors. And you have to put it all together. Prior that was my promotion, so that was like calling, trying to get sponsors, um, going to a couple places to pick up the sponsors, and being able to like look at all the advertisements before in the program so people can have, uh, we can have our sponsor business cards in the programs. Each business donates $100 to get a business size um, advertisement card into the, pro the programs. So our back of the program, if you take a look, you will see the sponsor cards. Yeah. And then you gotta get the sponsor business cards, scan them, put them in, and it takes a long time. <laughs> And then Jessica, on her spares, we would just, like, she had all my bias spares, but, like, we would just work on the planes. So, like, I got my grandma to call her family friend that does printing, and he did, like, the tickets and the posters and all that. I actually worked with the special needs kids to um, make the to make the posters that were hang, hung around the school, and that was really nice, too, because it helped me to build relationships, and we worked together, and they were really nice and welcoming. I really did enjoy working with Tyler and Dylan and Cameron. I mean, to me, all, all of the departments are equally important. If you don't have lights, then you don't have a show. If you don't have costumes, well, then your show doesn't look very good. If you don't have tickets or a poster or what have you, uh, then it's hard to promote your show. So they all have equal importance. This was my first production class, and I think it was great, actually. We got to paint. We got to take some of like the class to learn our lines, too. If I could just like take it again, I think. Yeah, I was kind of all over the place. It was really nice just walking around, just kind of interacting with people who needed help. A lot of like uh, transforming and breaking things, and just kind of like hands-on experience was really cool. I thought that it was a very positive experience and it really does help with just a number of the things in the production that have to be done. It's just a great way to use a class in order to get that stuff done. It's a typical high school class. It's just like your math class or your English class or what have you. It's, you get all sorts of personalities. The thing with this particular class, sometimes people don't quite know what they're getting into if they've never taken it before. Um, and so they walk in and it's kind of a, a chaotic atmosphere where people are working on different things all of the time. My goal is to always have everybody working. However, um, I can't be in 10 million different places at once. And so, you know, there's always people who waste their class time or, you know, don't really contribute to a particular department. And I, you know, that's hopefully reflected in their mind. I am glad that Ms. Bugner put me in a group with Amanda and Jessica because I love them and I love you, Michael. I think my favorite story would have to be when um, you and I, remember when you were recording and then like I was running with Amanda and then Amanda had the camera and I was booking it and then I just like tripped and like ate floor. <laughs> That was, that was one of the... <laughs> Alright, here we are kids, it's adventure time with Lynn and Amanda. Oh. We're on an adventure, we're gonna scope out um, everybody in the class, let's go! Alright, here we have Brandon, he's on a ladder, yeah. very cool, very interesting. This is interesting. Marissa Hall. Here's Marissa Hall, oh, she's a little bit camera shy, that's okay. This is Warren Lynn Sorgan, how are you today? 
camera shy. Wow, look at this amazing, absolutely beautiful paint job by Jenica Chabot and that kid. Absolutely Red beautiful. And blood. If you could um, rate this new stand out of 10, what would you give it? Uh, 45. Look, I'm gonna look at. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> What am I thinking right now? Honestly, if you could describe this class in one word, what would it be? <laughs> Incredible. Absolutely. Exactly what I would say. Took the words right out of my mouth. When did I have my camera back? Never! Alright! Uh, and we're off! <laughs> He's off. Wow. He's I mean, it's kind of really stereotypical of the musical kids to be dramatic, and but it's true, it's totally true. So the process for getting prepared for the musical was three nights a week at the very beginning of September, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights after school for about an hour and a half. Monday nights were to get the cast ready to say their lines, memorizing their lines, staging for their lines. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when we brought the whole cast, that's when we did all the major scenes, like all the big songs. Sunday rehearsals started in November, so Sunday rehearsals are from one to four, and that's when we try to put the whole entire play together. So it was a great like friend building experience because I got to spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and every Sunday with my friends. So it was a lot of fun. Stop! Everyone was very um, helpful. Everyone was really encouraging. If I messed up a song, they'd laugh and say it was okay. And at the end, everyone was friends. Everyone had fun. Everyone was nice and encouraging, especially to me. They all said how amazing I was at singing, which I was, I was like, I don't really think I'm that good in the, at the time. And they all commented on my dancing and my skills, and I just was really having fun at that point. <laughs> Being a stage manager is a huge opportunity. How do you feel about it happening? A plus. <laughs> that's that's it. Miss <laughs> Bugner, um, she had already asked um, like three people who had all said no due to their busy schedules or work schedules or things like that. So um, I had been assistant stage manager for about two weeks before she finally gave in to giving me the position of stage manager because no one else was. Last year when I was assistant stage manager, I remember like questioning why I even went to rehearsals. I remember just sitting there at rehearsals, um, making notes in my script um, that weren't very significant. It was a lot different because like taking the position of like one ahead of someone who's just making notes so like you're definitely still making notes like a lot of script notes but um you're also on stage like directing people giving them props um assisting the actual directors and things like that megan was a lot of fun uh she knew when to have fun but she also knew when to be serious uh she did a good job leading this year and uh she was early on all the cues so that was good had a nice advance because you were allowed to ask me a question <laughs> I was a stagehand for this year's production of Guys and Dolls. I didn't have enough time to actually to be part of the actual uh, performance and be an actor in it. So I figured with being a stagehand I could still help out with the play and be part of the whole production, but, um, with, but it would still work with my time schedule. Um, so I just talked to Ms. Bugner and she said, yeah, um, be, you can be a stagehand. I uh, just need to help keep everything organized, move uh, sets and props on and off for each different scene, make sure everything goes smoothly.
I think the rehearsals, they went well. There's like a few things obviously weren't the most organized. To say production wasn't troubled, I feel would be lying a bit. With any production that you do, you always run into problems, always. And sometimes those problems take different shapes and forms depending on the year or the, or the show. At first I was really nervous because I was a grade nine and they're all grade tens, 11, 12s. And there's only a couple of us who were grade nines at the time. There were more grade nines, but a lot of them dropped out. The first few rehearsals are always tricky because we do primarily a lot of singing. Else. Number one goal is always to get the songs learned, to learn the harmonies, to um, d you know have our chorus divided into different sections and tones so that the songs come out right. And sometimes that turns some people off. So we have grade nines that come and join us and then they come to a couple of rehearsals and then they say, eh, this really isn't for me. Mr. Yasha and Ms. Bubner, you know, always assumes the best in the main cast and that they can carry on their own roles and that they can carry out their own songs and so we spent a lot of time working on the chorus numbers which took up a lot of time in rehearsals which left us with not a lot of time to work on scenes that we really needed to work on but it's okay even though there's a, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress it everybody took that pressure and stress to make it into something really good so you are here at rehearsal how does that make you feel that's fantastic oh, it is not practices were uh, they started off a little bit uh, rusty because a lot of people weren't showing up or it was hard to get everyone to be quite in the same scene because I was, like, there was a big cast this year, it was a longer play, so it was um, harder to get everyone focused all the time. I feel as though up until probably November we were working on 50%. It took us a really long time to get into full swing in our production preparation. Line memorization was bad. Yeah, every year there's uh, there's always a couple of people who wait until the absolute last minute to learn their lines. They didn't come in a lot when they were supposed to, and they didn't have their lines memorized. It's very frustrating. It's frustrating for me as the director because I know they've had their script for months and they haven't bothered to look at it. It's frustrating for other cast who have taken the time to learn their lines. Through the practices, being able to move forward to a different scene or a different act, we had to keep going backtracking for those people who did not know their lines to say theirs over again to the other way. Uh, memorizing songs, it took a, it took a bit. Some people didn't learn their lines, but I, I can't blame anybody because it happened to me. But in the end, I did get, I did have everything under control. I should have had my lines memorized earlier. Definitely should have memorized my lines quicker. And Boogner keeps saying, no, remember your lines, remember your lines, remember your lines. He's like, uh, I don't have lines. I do sound. But I feel as though in that last week, people really realized, if I don't know what I'm going to stay on stage, that's going to be really bad. So I feel as though that fear factor really got people to gear up and kind of go towards their lines, me included. I was kind of lazy, just like, oh, I can memorize this later. I wasn't nervous. I used to get nervous. I think I've just been doing this for so long. and. For whatever reason, the majority of them love to wait to the very last moment to, you know, get it together and get it done, but they always seem to do it. It's just unfortunate sometimes that it takes so long. It looks like that. this line in um, in the Havana scene and 
it's it's such a random line and it's it, it really just makes me laugh the way Jessica says it. It's ham sandwich. It, and we took it out because it's just kind of it's really sudden. I liked when Amanda and Warren rehearsed their song like Sue Me. Were you there for that? Yeah, you watched it. I liked when I rehearsed Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat. And look at them. You guys are late. Get up with the back group. My friend Aston, who plays Big Jewel, Ju <coughs> Julie, he um, he always. Um, kept me in a brighter mood when, like, nothing interesting was going on, even though he didn't show up that much. But, you know, he kept the, he kept the thing, he kept things interesting for me, so that was always good. I remember when Mr. Asher was teaching stuff, and then we would go and have naps. <laughs> <laughs> No. Hey, no. How you doing? No. Do you have the sound on? Do you have the sound on? Oh, well, damn. Yeah, I do. Oh my god. I just said fuck you, Cam. He watched some funny videos, like one of a girl who said, who saying we should all speak Americanish. We don't need all these languages, people. We don't need no British in language or. Canadian language or Hawaiian language or Alaskan language. We need just American, okay? And that uh, we don't need Canadian language with their ching chang chongs. There's just a lot of fonts. You can't get that with no Canadian language with the little ching chang chongs. <laughs> and you have a lot of inside jokes that probably don't make sense to other people, but. <laughs> so, out of curiosity, how do you think today practice like? Well, it could have gone better, but it could have been worse. I mean, the city didn't die because of me. That means we did pretty good. really wanted the dance numbers to be uh, big and elaborate. Miss Wigner is the coach of the dance team where she's the teacher rep so she is a little bit more connected with the dance sense. No offense Mr. Yasher, I don't really see you being a very dancey kind of guy. <laughs> um. Emma who is um, was our, our lead choreographer um, had taken home some of the music in the summer to get some ideas. We assumed wrongly that some of the grade nine students that were coming onto the dance team who are really strong dancers would want to take part in the play. And, um, you know, just uh, some of them were feeling a bit overwhelmed with, with school already. With being on the dance team, they played basketball, they're involved in, you know, different activities, and they just didn't feel like they could make the commitment to do the show as well. However, we had other people that stepped in to take on that responsibility. My co-dancers were great. Um, I've known Olivia and Emma for quite a few years, and I just met Maddie this year, and they were excellent to work with, all very talented dancers. Uh, Paige, who has danced in previous shows, it wasn't her first choice to be a dancer this year, but she always um, steps up and helps us, and she was great. I was a dancer in Cinderella and in Urinetown, and this year we were desperate for dancers, and I said, you know what, I'll do it. Like, I enjoy dancing on stage, and. I enjoy performing like that, and it's a different way to showcase my talents. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it, and then had quite a bit to do with that. Olivia, who's not even, you know, 
really a dancer. I've never taken a dance class in my life, uh, but I was really interested in it. She agreed to kind of uh, take charge and, and teach and learn some choreography and create some choreography and, and do the best that she could, and I think she did a great job. She pulled it off really well on stage, but she's just an acrobat. So she would do stuff in our tap number, and she'd go about it, and she'd be like, wasn't that good? And we're like, okay, let me out. Like, yeah, it, it was great. But she, she pulled through. She did really good. I'm super proud of her. <laughs> okay, okay, Michael. <laughs> they all have had dance experience behind their belt, so they were a lot better than I was. But I just kind of pushed through it. I spent extra hours at home making sure that I knew what was going on and making sure that I knew my dances. And, and then we did have Maddie Langdon who came out grade nine and I think she did a fantastic job. Emma Searles danced with me almost my whole life and then she's running the dance team with Miss Bugner this year and most of my friends were joining the dance team and I thought it'd be fun to do dance at school and outside of school too. The four of them together made it work. They um, made the dances interesting I thought and, and, and kind of cute. It kind of started and I had like a couple of ideas but personally for myself I was really self-conscious of them because I don't dance so I don't know what it looks like right like I don't know if this is something that they do or not so it did kind of take a while but then they started accepting my ideas and they kept like going off of them and we kept jumping off of each other's ideas. We all had really good intentions at the start and we were all ready to go right in September and then we got sidetracked with each of us having a separate part or um, chorus rehearsals or stuff like that. I would say most of it was Paige, Olivia, and Emma. A lot of the practices, um, I had to do songs because I wanted to learn the songs to perfect them. But they choreographed all the dances and I helped with um, quite a little bit of it and I made sure I would help out with it. I think the thing is that it was a bigger production than we normally had done. I, we did it a previous year, but this time when we did it, it was two and a half hours long and that's ex an extremely long play to pull off. There was definitely pressure there, especially when um, we'd finish one dance, like we had four dances in the show, we'd finish one and Bugner, Yasher, someone would come to us and say, oh, by the way, you have more you have to learn and choreograph. And it wasn't even that we were just learning them, we were coming up with them ourselves, which is a lot of work. We purposely wanted um, Take Back Your Mink and uh, Bush on a Pack to be really like show girly and something you would see at a hot box, which is where they take place. We had to keep it super PG for the elementary schools. But if you watch any videos on YouTube, I promise you the videos you'll see on there are a lot more scandalous than what we did. And then we wanted um, Havana and the Crap Shooters number to be completely different. I don't even know how it came about, but I think Emma and I were just goofing around one day and all of a sudden we were like, we should make it a tap dance. That would look so cool. And then, you know, we got these white shirts for it and everything. And then that's how we came about with thinking oh, we should do it in black light to kind of like set the mood and stuff. And so it was just a lot of piggybacking off of each other's ideas. And then um, with Havana, we kind of had to stick to that more Cuban style. Um, the dancers were a bit behind coming into late October, early November, but we had some late night rehearsals and that kind of got us back on track. We'd stay till about like seven. It's usually like 6.30. And I don't regret having to stay here four hours to get these dances done because it was one of the most fun things ever. Sometimes we would lose track, of, like we would uh, get off track. Uh, well, one day <laughs> you were trying to order pizza. And I put my debit card down somewhere because I put it with my phone. There it goes. And we were practicing our dances. We're like, oh, the pizza man's here because we didn't know he was coming yet. So we ran and I was like, where's my debit card? And so she's like freaking out, the pizza guy's here, she's looking all over for her bank card. I was screaming, I was like, where's my debit card? We were searching everywhere for that debit card, we were like tearing the set apart and like looking under benches and... And it was just madness because I was yelling, I was, I was so mad because I just replaced my debit card that I broke. Next thing we know, we look over, after the pizza's paid for, we got money to pay for the pizza. Maddie looks over, it's sitting on the ladder by the door. 
Right by the door is her bank card and she just lost it. So it was an adventure that Wednesday night, I'll tell you that. That was the first night we ordered food and then we ordered pizza another night and then sushi another night. And we were so scared that we weren't gonna have a debit card. So like, we're all bringing our money and we're like, we have to make sure that we have enough. So now we always joke with her like, buddy, make sure you got your bank card. And we always like, make sure we have a keen eye on bank cards. <laughs> One night I had my debit card in my boot and I didn't have my boots on because I was dancing and I freaked out because I couldn't find mine. And Olivia's like, there's no way in hell we're losing another debit card. <laughs> and I'm like, it's right here. Like, we're okay. I found it. <laughs> I would forget the dance or I wouldn't know the dance as much as them. And they would choreograph all the dances and I wouldn't be able to learn it because sometimes I had to leave early from school. I had to go to a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment. Everything was just not going my way. Eventually it cooled down as soon as everyone knew what they were doing and everyone was on time with each other. And it was a lot of fun, but we got everything together. We got the staging done. It was just really fun hanging out with them because I made a lot of new friends. Jillian, are you going to be seeing this year's production of Guys and Dolls? Probably. Are you going to be seeing the St. Mary's production of Guys and Dolls? Uh, yeah, of course. Why not? Are you going to be seeing this year's production of Guys and Dolls? I don't know. Are you going to be seeing this year's production of Guys and Dolls? Yeah. What about Brittany? Of course! Are you going to be seeing Guys and Dolls? Absolutely! Are you going to be seeing Guys and Dolls? Yes! Absolutely! Are you going to be seeing Guys and Dolls? <laughs> Are you going to be seeing guys and dolls? <laughs> no. Are you going to be seeing guys and dolls? Yes! Maddie, are you going to be seeing guys and dolls? I'm in it! Since the show starts uh, when? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Don't uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. I think that there that it, it will come together, and I think that they'll start to relax on stage and have more fun with it. But we need to make sure our lines are memorized before that happens. With the actor, how do you think uh, the musical will go? As it's it's going to go great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be positive. It's gonna be fantastic. Fakest dancer ever. What? Sarcasm. Sorry. You gotta put on the good. No, 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 no. It's, it's. We have to be positive because if we don't, then uh, things can go badly, and we just have to try our best. I'm not gonna lie, I was worried about it going into show week. Um, at first when I'm watching everyone, it kind of seemed like it was gonna be a train wreck. You get certain rehearsals close to the actual production, you'd think that like, oh no, like so many things are gonna go wrong. It was just horrible, like a week before the show. Uh, Mr. Asher and I were, we were definitely worried about a week before. We had a Sunday rehearsal, it was not good. It was not even close to good. The, the play's in five days and it's not going well. I ever see everyone, everyone on their script. There was a period where I feel as though we were looking for things to blame when we weren't getting what we wanted. And I feel as though that devolved from blaming the play itself over the people and kind of wish-wash between that. It was really not, <laughs> not the happiest place to be. We really shouldn't have been blaming anything. It was just kind of the natural course things took. You know, we just shake our heads and... Especially opening nights. I get like, you know, like my heart races and my hands get sweaty and I just want to go out there and I just want it to be done with.
it was really good. It just like, I don't even, I can't even explain. We just pulled it off so well. I think it went good. I liked it. I'm not sure if everyone else did, but I know I liked it. People just brought it on stage. Like we just saw these like things that weren't coming out during rehearsals coming out on stage and it all kind of filled in the cracks that we saw during those rehearsals. It all really came together really well. Like our performances were really good. Our actual productions actually came up phenomenal. Like we had our first production was amazing. And there was definitely a negative attitude at times. But I feel as though when we had that positive attitude, we were able to outweigh it and ultimately bring on a good show. There's a lot of funny parts and like a lot of like behind the scenes that I liked. It was an incredible job by, done by everybody. And most people knew their cues, most people knew their lines. Like there was a few people that like, they didn't know their lines um, for a while, but then they learned them and they like perform them really well. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Um, just there was a lot of funny malfunctions, and as Garrett would say, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. So today, let's have a happy accident and see what we can make out of it. Like in the final productions, I'd say there were a lot of mic issues. Yeah, uh, this year the mics were a bit of a problem. You know, the old ones just don't get any newer, and even the new ones are starting to get old. Uh, we could have the time when Joey dropped his mic. Where, we, where Robert kept saying he might have dropped it in the toilet because the mic apparently got wet. Sometimes they'd break and like during the middle of a production so we'd have to replace a wire or whatever. I think some people were a little bit rough with them, but uh, we, despite all that, we were able to pull off a solid 10, 11 mics. So that was good enough for us. And by the last play, they were all working good. It's a lot of pressure because you know that if there's ever a big problem, you know, all the fingers are pointed at you. One other thing. This guy had his butt saved by Yasher when he turned off the bus and messed something up. I didn't do that. That wasn't my fault. Well, to be honest, the mystery still goes unsolved. Um, basically, I was clumsy. Robert, during one of the performances, went onto the soundboard and turned off the bus, which is one of the modes on it. Um, and for some reason, the red piano just crapped out mid-play. That, that wasn't on me. Uh, he still believes it's not his fault. He thought that was all some mystical force, when actually it was him. It was Robert. You know, they blame me because I'm the guy who gets all the blame. But really, that, that was just a bad day. It was my first year running it, um, instead of just being in the back. So. I think I did pretty good, but there was definitely some problems we're going to have to work out for next year. And it wasn't all my fault, but I'll take some of the blame for sure. <laughs> Everything backstage was mostly good. It was just the makeup artist. She was crazy. Should I tell that story of the makeup lady? Okay, I'm going to tell the camera this time because I'm talking to the audience. All right, so the makeup lady was this 21 year, or 21 year old lady who was doing makeup for some of the cast. She was there for one day. One day and one day only. Why, you ask? Because she got fired. Because she was dumb. She was hitting on most of the guys. Hitting on me a few other, and a few others. It was hilarious. She got, like she asked me, like, how old am I? How old am I? What grade am I in? It's like, eh, I'm not telling you. Yeah, and she got fired the next day. She was just trying to hit on some underage kids, which was actually quite hilarious. But other than that, all the cast got along relatively good. We all did our part for the play, and we put on a great show. I would mention the makeup lady, but I think that was already covered in great detail. <laughs> Well, originally the desk um, for one of, for the mission scenes had wheels on it. I originally tried and roll them on and off, but one wheel uh, kept popping off whenever we tried to move it. So I, one day I took the wheel try, and tried to properly fix it so it would stay on. And then you know what happened? It popped off. So then I tried fixing it again, and the other wheel popped off. And so did this one. So we eventually just decided, uh, let's take off all the wheels, we're just going to carry the stupid thing. It turned from a one-man job with the wheels into a two-man job without them, but I don't think it uh, harmed the play any to remove them. 
fact, I think it actually helped because it definitely looked a lot better without the wheels on it. Mr. Yax is a great guy, but he's got some opinions that may not be so nice. On one of the shows, I was, I didn't hit the right first note on one of my songs, and he told me it made his ears bleed. I'm not interested in what he won't be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. gave me incentive to try extra hard for the rest of the shows to make Mr. Yasher proud. I like musicals that have really catchy songs that are really good to sing to. I liked Bushel and a Pack. I loved Bushel and a Pack because it was super cutesy and fun and like we got to kind of interact with the audience and wave to them and stuff. It was really nice because I was I was the MC of the Master Ceremony so I always introduce the Adelaide and the Hot Box, like the Hot Box Girls. So that was really cool because I kind of hyped up the audience for them to perform their acts and their dances. And now, for the grand finale of the Round the World Revenue, we take you down on the farm with our star, Miss Adelaide, and her Hot Box Barmettes. really kind of showcased our more jazzy kind of flexibility side of all of us. I love you, a bushel and a pack, a bushel and a pack, though it beats me all to heck, beats me all to heck, how I'll ever tell the farm, ever tell the farm when I want to keep my arms about you, about you, about you. The cows and chickens are going to the dickens. I love you, a bushel and a pack. We had the giant hot box sign and everyone stubbed their toe on it, they would trip on it. I broke my toe. I broke my toe backstage after Bushel and a Peck at the student buyout. I had a really quick change out of my Bushel and a Peck costume, which was the yellow tutu, into my mission band costume. And I was running backstage um, into the lecture hall and I tripped and I fell over the stairs and I rammed my toe and then bent it all weird. I went to the hospital that night and they were like, yeah, your toe's broken. And I was like, cool, I'm still gonna dance. Um, I don't have a favorite song. My favorite scene though is Havana, which is the giant fight scene. Not because I could hit Jeremiah, but it was just overall fun because everyone loved it. Havana was very artsy and we had to just present ourselves. The Saturday night production, my mom and my dad came and so did one of my friends, that's a guy. It was really funny because I came on stage for Havana and I had to switch my, my shirts from a neon green shirt and I came on stage and my fly was undone and my neon green shirt was through my fly. And it was so embarrassing because it was a neon green shirt coming out of my black pants. It was so funny. So Olivia, my partner who was dressed up as one of the hot box girls, who was flirting with me because I was a guy, was telling me, trying to tell me something. And I'm like, hey, stay in character. Like I'm telling her, stay in character, I'm relaxed. And she said, no, like, you're, look over there. So I look over and all I see is my mom and my dad and they're telling me like, you're doing this. They're like, me to do something I, I didn't realize and then I looked down and my fly was undone and it was so embarrassing and then it came backstage and everyone was peeing and laughing and Miss Wigner said that was the highlight of her production that's the funniest thing ever and that whole scene was so much fun because I got to jump on Nick's back and we had the whole big fight scene like I'm fighting with Jessica Phelps a lot of people fell a lot of people broke their toes the dance team is was a wreck by the end of the show because of the Havana scene. So, they were all broken. 
Yet they still danced. I don't know how they did that. One story is I had to smack Jeremiah Freeman across the face with a plastic tray. And the very last day, my thumb went through the tray. And I broke the tray. <laughs> I got to wear. I really liked the take back your make dress that I got to wear even though a lot of my costumes broke all the time for unknown reasons. and even some of the cast, that we know when there's been a mistake, we know when something didn't go as planned, but you just have to remind yourself that the audience doesn't always know that. Sky, have you seen the satellite? And so when we have, you know, people on staff who have been coming to see our show for years and years and years, and they come out and they say, you know, I, I think this was one of the best shows you guys have done. And Mr. Ash and I kind of shake our heads a little bit and say, really? Um, but it's but it's because we notice all the little mistakes that happen along the way. If you can, you know, just get through it and keep moving, and um, yeah, you just come out with Sky people enjoy the show, and I guess that's the main goal. Sarah, dear, I've always been caring. All I want is for you to be happy. my brother in the play was fun. <laughs> I would tease him, I won't lie, I teased him a lot about his role and how he made his little mistakes during the play. And he called himself Brother Abernathy and it was just these little mistakes that were so funny but it was great. I had a lot of fun. I love him, I love him but I tease him all the time. <laughs> I won't admit it. And the strong stage with things that I didn't tell Miss Boobner about. Like, I went on stage with like a roast pig and all that. You don't pay off. I can tell the whole town you're just such a dirty vulture. <laughs> nice. Nice. Where's the crap game? It's about 10 minutes from here. Which way? This way. I thought Sumi was really funny. You promise me this, you promise me that, you promise me anything under the sun that you're giving and kissing your crown in your hand. My favorite song was Sumi. Sumi, absolutely Sumi. Sumi was my favorite song in the entire play. Their singing was amazing. They really captivated the audiences. Because I got to hit Warren with a newspaper. It's got a whale on him and I got to yell at him. And that was nice, you know. You're at it again, you're running again. I'm not gonna play second fiddle tonight. I'm taking my time, you're falling around. Then I tell you now that we're back.
destroyed crap shooters. And we had the tap number and I love tapping. was a lot of fun and watching the kids reactions when the girls did and went and did like all their aerials and their flips and whatnot the kids love that stuff so that one was a really fun one to do in front of audiences <laughs> Um, were the big numbers. Um, luck be a lady and sit down, you're rocking the boat. Luck be a lady. Even though it hurt my knee to do that one because I injured my knee right before the performances, but it was a lot of fun that one. I thought both Nick and Landon really nailed their songs. had me kind of funny. Like a dream. Yeah, a dream. Nice sense for yourself, sit down. Sit down, you're gonna go low. Sit down. Sense for yourself, sit down. Sit down, you're gonna go low. And the devil will check you one day. But if you have to climb on your wicked go, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're gonna go low. I just liked the energy everybody had. Landon Holmes did such an amazing job conquering that song and just everybody just seemed to have such a good time. When I first rehearsed it with Mr. Yashner, it was just horrible. It, it was really bad. And then I feel like I improved somewhat when I sang it, like in the show. So I'm kind of proud of all that. songs was good and I love I like it better when there's you know the entire cast on stage singing as opposed to just one or two people come brothers I know it's difficult but let one of you testify to the spit in his heart Ben go tell him what a bum you are one line that really didn't catch my attention when I was reading the script but seemed to always get a big laugh was the whole I used to be a bad guy and a gambler I ain't gonna do that no more <laughs> there. Don't you feel better now? Nah, all right. I didn't expect, like, that line was just kind of like a random line. Like, I thought there were funnier lines. But for whatever reason, that line was the line that got the biggest laugh. And I kind of see it now, but, like, when I was reading the script, that line didn't catch me. Uh, the ending scene in the mission when they had to move all the benches in, that was a difficult one because there was a lot of benches. <laughs> Olivia Bahari came up to me one day and she was like, Warren, you need to, are you going to propose to Amanda? And if so, you need to do it at the bio. So we were planning that for a month. And then when it finally came to the day, it, <laughs> it took so long to get ready for it because we had to, I had to get flowers. We had to hide the banner, had to hide the flowers, had to make sure she had no idea it was coming at all. During our last scene in the bio, Warren looked at me, and I guess he wanted to tell me he was sick, but I didn't really hear him because I was focused on what was going on on stage. So he looked at me, and he looked really worried. And so I was like, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on, what's going on? I went off stage right before bows, ran around, went to the back. So then we were doing bows, and I went to go up, and Warren's not there. So my first thought is, something's wrong. So first, I started freaking out, and I was like, Jessica, where's Warren? And Jessica looks at me and she's like, I don't know, like, I don't know where Warren is. Nobody knows where Warren is. And then, so the lights go down after we finish our song, and nobody moved. Like, 
Jessica wouldn't let me leave and everyone of you was standing there and then they brought the lights back up and the first note and I knew right away I didn't even have to look at the door. I knew it was him and I knew exactly what he was doing, a little sneak. And then I'll post. It was so beautiful. Nobody's ever done anything for me like that before. I just felt so overwhelmed with joy and happiness and love for him. And then he walked up to me and he gave me the flowers and he asked me to prom. And of course I said yes because you can turn down that cute face. But I never experienced anything like that before in my life. At the very end, the bows ended, the show was done. The lights went down, we were all trying to find our way out of the wings, and I love you, McKenna. She smashed into the stairs and almost knocked down the two buildings at the back, and it was the loudest bang. And <laughs> it was crazy, because we didn't know who fell and what happened, so I ran, and I was trying to turn the lights on, and then the phone on the wall fell in the garbage, and everything was going wrong so eventually she, she's okay she's okay but it was really funny at the now it's funny at the time it wasn't funny it's just such an amazing thing it was such a great time to work with all of the cast members again i always enjoy the actual you know run of the show people are high energy they're excited you get good feedback from the audience it's always so much more fun performing for an audience as opposed to just running it through in a rehearsal it wasn't that exciting like the practices you don't really it's not fun and, but it's fun in the end when you're performing and it's worth it so it, it i mean it's always fun and i feel like i see different friendships form which which i like you like become friends like it's like a friendship after you're done the play so that's cool because it's like almost a family because you're with them so much practicing and it's just like oh uh, i have a lot of close friends like maddie and Olivia and Nash and Lily, they're some of my closest ones. <laughs> I watch people who maybe, you know, were a little bit quieter come out of their shell. It was really fun. I'm more of a shy person, so it was kind of hard to put myself out there like that, but it was really fun. I'm glad I did it. Um, and th th that's what I enjoy watching and seeing is just watching all the students kind of come together as a little family and support each other and yes there's bickering and there's arguing and there's disagreements along the way but at the end of the day everyone's goal is the same and um, and you and they really do come together to, to make it work. I still have the uh, the song guys and dolls stuck in my head because the guy's only doing it for some doll some doll some doll the guy's only doing it for some doll As a school, uh, we're lucky, we're really lucky to have a theater program as only two schools in Woodstock even offer that. And um, and I really appreciate everything Ms. Bugner and Mr. Yasher do for it. And I hope we do have another one, even though this year was kind of slow. We didn't sell many tickets. Um, I hope that we can turn that around. Um, it's a big commitment, that's no doubt, but I feel as though it's a worthwhile commitment. I had a lot of people come up to me and tell me that it was one of the best St. Mary's musicals that they've ever seen and that they really liked it. I think it went very well, everything was executed nicely, and um, especially for how things were working out. It was a fun musical, I had a great time doing it, and I can't wait till next year. Um, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity that I got this year and last year to be that big of a part of the musical because it really meant a lot and the musical is like my family. I just want to say that everybody worked so extremely hard to pull off this larger than most musicals that we've done and they just everybody worked so hard and everybody put a lot of effort into it and in the end we pulled it off and we had a great show and I think that I, I can't even have words to describe how much it means just to be a part of it and just to be 
you know, having that family, I'm kind of missing them. I was so sad on our last show. I was like, oh no, this is my last show at St. Mary's. But I'm so glad that um, this was my last show and I got to work with the people I did. And I'm so glad it's something I've been involved in for the last few years. So we want this part of St. Mary's to continue. It's been such a huge part of it for years now and we want it to keep going. I just, I don't know, I couldn't picture doing high school without the musicals. Um, I'm really glad that I decided to do it. It was kind of hard since I'm pretty shy, but I'm glad I did it. It was really fun. <laughs> For my first play, it was a roller coaster. It was crazy. I mean, it was great, and as soon as the roller coaster ended, I miss it. I'm excited for next year and next year and the years to come. Uh, I mean, I always, uh, sometimes when you're kind of in the middle of it, you go, you go, oh, it's over soon. Like I'm tired of, you know, staying after school every night and I'm tired of coming in on Sundays. And um, and I know Mr. Yash was in the same boat as me in that. And and, and students too, like there, we have other responsibilities, other things that we need to be doing. And um, sometimes they have to take a back burner to coming into the school to practice and rehearse. Um, but, you know, I, and I, I go home at the end of the show and I go, oh, you know, that was, it was all kind of worth it and it was fun and I know the kids appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Good job, guys. Hope to see you all next year. Hello, this is Landon Holmes and this is a Michael Doyle film. <laughs> Right Am I allowed to swear? Oh yeah. Or does this, does this have to be kept PG? We have to keep it wrong. Like, can I say the word asshole? Yeah. Well, I guess I just said it. Yeah. Is Miss Booner gonna watch this? I'm sorry. Miss Boogner was really great at. <coughs> <laughs> I'm Amanda's goal. I definitely like stealing some of Miss Boogner's canes. And uh, if you ever get a hold of one, just put some duct tape on the end. Fling her as far as you can. You don't have to scratch that. Miss uh, <laughs> wow. Boogner was not happy with that. <laughs> Spookler, if you're watching this, don't hire a makeup person ever again. It's a no-go. Like, it's 0 out of 10, didn't work. It's a good try, though. I love you. I really appreciated you doing that, but... Um, Miss Gasher, not Miss Gasher. Um, Miss Boogner. <laughs> I have Miss Gasher fifth period, so that was, whoo! And I missed her Gasher second period. But, um... Are they gonna be bloopers? Cause I don't wanna be on the bloopers. <laughs> so here's a story from A to Z. You wanna get with me? You gotta listen carefully. I don't know. Okay, I'll ask you a question. Okay, let's do this. So, Marissa Hall, Alster. He's back, he's back, he's back, he's back. He's back.
Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.